Isaiah chapter 28. Hosea. Interesting, the 28th book of the Bible. It's interesting because in each of the chapters, Isaiah can be late to with study. I haven't found them all, but to the particular book of the Bible, the chapter. So I've been telling you the chapter number and the book number of the Bible. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim. Now, Hosea is a great book and passages like this when it comes to Ephraim. Because in Utah, there's a group of people called the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. And they believe they come from Ephraim. And there's many passages in the book of Hosea and passages like this. Okay, you're from Ephraim? And one of the passages in Hosea, you know, let Ephraim alone, he's joined to idols. Are you belong to Ephraim? Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim. God says, woe unto you, you're prideful. <clears throat> I mean, we got locked up in a vault somewhere. The, the, the golden things that whatever Joseph Smith supposedly saw in his spectacular eyeglass. And you can take verses like this spiritually and apply them. But the context, I mean, they're the ones that say, okay, we're of Ephraim. Okay. Then go at it so the chapter deals with ephraim the son of joseph who was given the egyptian wife whoa that's not good to the crown you know power reign of pride oh there we go Pride is a sin to the drunkards, alcohol. Pride in alcohol of Ephraim. Man, that's America. Whose glorious beauty, the devil's beautiful. Jesus Christ is beautiful. The virtuous woman, Proverbs 31, beauty is vain. Is a fading flower. It's dying. Death. Which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. There's the alcohol again. The valleys are great. <laughs> but usually valleys are not. But the valleys. Yeah, here's a dying flower. In a rich valley. Behold the Lord. As a mighty strong one, the Lord Jesus Christ, which has a tempest of hail and destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. Stormy weather. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, again, verily, verily. Shall trodden under feet. Walked over, stumpered over. This is a warning. When Jesus said, verily, verily, it's important. And when God repeats himself twice, three times, four times, there is more warning of the drunkards and pride of Ephraim than the birth of Jesus Christ. And I hate, you know, sound like a broken record, but there are people out there, oh, the birth of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ, Christmas, Christmas. There's more in the Bible than Christmas. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I just want to get to the fact is. There are churches that we cater to those that come to Eastern Christmas service and won't teach the things as of Isaiah 28. Or any of the book of Isaiah. As a glorious beauty, there is again. Which is on the head of the fat valleys, there it is again. Shall be a fading flower, there it is again, as a hasty fruit before the summer. It came out premature. And then when the hot summer comes, it, it came up too early. 
which when he has looked upon it, seeth, while it is yet in his hand, and eateth it up. In the hand of the Lord. In that day, there you go. Shall the Lord of hosts be a crown of glory, not a crown of pride. Don't you ever associate Jesus Christ with pride. Glory. And for a diadem of beauty, there's a beauty, unto the residue, the remnant of his people Israel. Here's the king coming down with many crowns. And the spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment. That's Jesus Christ for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they have erred through wine, drinking wine, through strong drink, alcohol, errors. It doesn't make you think straight. The king's mother in Proverbs 30. Or the 31, it is not for kings to drink wine, Lamel. It's not for kings and princes to drink wine. Mother had more sense. Those, strength, those strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet of earth through strong drink. The law stated the priest was not to have drink. When he was on duty, they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They have erred in vision. They stumble in judgment because of alcohol. Alcohol stumbles your judgment. Wine's a marker. Strong drink is raging. Whoso is deceived thereby is not wise. For the tables are full of vomit. And filthiness. So that there is none place clean. That's wretched. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Sure ain't the priest and the prophet. They're, they're intoxicated. Them that are weaned with milk and drawn from the breast, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. It's important that, you know, we, we got 14 saved, we got 50 saved, we got 70 saved, we got 100 saved. How many grew in the Lord? What do you mean? How many people's left your church and did not come back? Well, what kind of food are you feeding your sheep? You can't have the sheep grow by goat food. What's that mean? Yeah, I know. What's that mean? For precept, that's a commandment, must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. It's repetitious over and over. But with a stammering tongue, excuse me, with a stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people, Israel? Tongues. That's the book of Acts. But they didn't listen. To whom he said, God, this is the rest. You find that throughout the book of Hebrews. Wherein ye may cause the weary to rest. Who is he writing to? He's writing to Jewish people. Who is Hebrews written to? Oh, the church. Hebrews church. So let's go, let's go run to Malachi and put the church under law of tithing, filling the storehouses of God. Do you rob God of your tithes? And then teach we're not under the law. 
and completely deny the entire uh, epistle that Paul wrote to one church about somebody's coming to the church and put them back under the law. Tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 14, 21 and 22. That rest in Hebrews is a Hebrew rest. They may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. But the word of the Lord was upon them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line a little and a little and there a little that they might go and fall backwards israel and be broken and shared and taken everything that jesus spoke he spoke of the father correctly and it made them stumble he's casting out devils in the nation here well he does it by beelzebub Cast out devils by Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, the devil of the devils. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, talking to Israel, that rule this people, the high priests, the chief priests, which were the same ruling of Jesus' time, which is in Jerusalem. That's not America. Because ye have said, Israel, we have made a covenant with death. Why would you do that? And with hell we are in agreement. It's foolishness. When the overflowing scourge, that's the mighty hell of verse 2, shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. Oh, the storms will come, the troubles will come, the problems will come, but not to us. It shall not come unto us, for, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. I mean, they're admitting their lies. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, God, here's the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, I lay Zion for a foundation of stone. You find that in Daniel. You find Exodus in 1 Peter. A sure foundation. No other foundation can a man lay to that which is Christ Jesus, Paul said. He that believeth shall not make haste. Exodus 12, 11. Sooner than the better. You're not going to rush the Lord's rapture. I heard a time from a well-known preacher that somebody said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rush everything. And he got the understanding of the, the temple mount needs to be built where the dumb of the rock is. And he went over there. He's going to blow up the dumb of the rock. God said, hey, make my time. Man. And made the guy know. And he got arrested. God has a set table. Judgment also will I lay to the line. Try to find my notes. And I can't see where that number is. And a righteous to the plummet. That's 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 a string with a weight at the end. And it measures. And the hail, so in verse 2, Revelation 16, 21, lay it on the line, the plummet line, shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And the waters, verse 2, overflow to hiding places. And the beasts, I mean, the city Babylon sits on many waters. And the warriors are people, tongues, languages. The people are going, to, are going to insult and inflict and try to dominate Israel. 
and your covenant with death shall be disannulled. <coughs> and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the old form scourge shall pass through. <laughs> Verse 2. You don't control your destiny. You don't control your death. You don't control nothing. God does. Yeah, people making a pact with the devil. Hell. For the time that it goes forth, it shall take you. For the morning, by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and be vexation only to understand the report. The shadow of death. For the bed is shorter than a man that can stretch his clothes on it. It's not comfortable. And a covering, a blanket, a covering, then that he can wrap himself in. Here's a, here's a guy, a full-grown adult, and he's got a baby blanket. And it's cold. He's lying in a bed and his feet is sticking off. It's not comfortable. For the Lord shall rise up, there's second advent, out in Mount Perizam, Second Samuel 5 20, first Chronicles 14 11. He shall be wroth, angry, in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work, his strange work, <laughs> and bring to pass his act, his strange act. They're not even going to recognize that's God. Now, therefore, be ye not mockers, making fun of. Lest your bands, being tied up, handcuffs, strings, ropes, chains, be made strong, made worse. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. Give ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. I mean, to the church, if you're going to if you apply a spiritual application, uh, uh, he that says to the church, I think I forget what it is. But in the, in the gospel, he that has ears, let him hear. Now we're going to go into planning. Does the plowman plow all day to sow? Does he open and break the clods of the ground? He has to. When he made plain the face thereof, the ground, does he not cast out the flinches, scatter the common, and cast in the principal wheat and the pointed barley and in the rye in their plate? Does not he plant the seeds like he's supposed to? For his God does instruct him to discretion on how to plant, how to grow, how to break up. And does teach him. And we just we just read about you know about teaching. Verse nine: Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he understand doctrine? The farmer understands. What about the priest and the prophet? They're too drunk to know. And the fact is that they're intoxicated shows that they don't know they're not supposed to be intoxicated. The finches are not threshed with a threshing instrument. Neither is the cartwheel turned about upon the coman. But the finches are beaten out with a staff and the coman with a rod. He does everything properly. The priests are not. The prophets are not. The people are not. Bread corn is bruised because he will not ever be threshing it. Listen. Rod, staff, beaten, chastisement is coming. If the farmer chastises the fields, plowman plow, breaking the clods, <coughs> there's breaking the seed, there's breaking the harvest, 
Israel, I'm going to have to break you. And I'm giving you a simple thing as here as a farmer dealing with his crops. Israel's like into a vineyard. Israel's like into a fig tree. Break it with wheel, his cart, nor bruise it with his horsemen. This also forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful counsel and excellent working. God's going to have to beat Israel to get him right. Going to have to chase him. And going to be just like a farmer going out there in the farms, working the ground. And, and, and the attitude is Israel, well, we made a pact with hell. We made a pact with death. We're all taking care of God's like, hey, I'm higher than hell. I'm more, more sure than death. What I have planned for you, you're going to get, is going to happen to you.